Okay, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So today we're going to show what minimum and maximum mobility looks like on a Warlock. We're going to compare them all at once and then we'll do some lovely speed testing and concluding with a final Mega Runway Race. So here's the theory. We have our runway, we have our Warlock. The higher mobility our Warlock has, the higher he will jump off the ground, whether it's a full or a short hop, and this means he'll spend more time going up than going forward, basic principles. The lower the mobility is the lower he'll hop off the ground, and the more time he'll spend going forward, the more momentum he carries, and less momentum is wasted. Got it? Great. Onward! So, as my rollouts are getting like literally milliseconds between each other and getting really consistent, don't mind if I save both my time and your time by including only one run in the next set of footage. Thanks very much. the concept of testing all this was that mobility affects the strength of your burst glide therefore it makes sense that we went faster. This just gets countered by all the extra height that we get as a side effect and we get absolutely nothing good out of it. So quite honestly from the look of that in terms of a casual standpoint that's not that big of a difference. Uh, not enough to make a casual player regrind all their armor for example. Uh, but for someone like me that plays the game quite a lot I can see that even getting that little bit more distance in addition to the lower heights during the dashes that that alone could make the difference of me getting sniped while I change pieces of cover in something like Trials. So just looking at some final results then, for the jump height differences we see a massive difference. I would choose low mobility any day of the week in order to get that lower chance of getting sniped as I dash from cover to cover. Uh, if you care about strafe speed for dueling then just get a hand cannon or something with moving target and that essentially counters the difference. Uh, for sword dashes we saw a bit of a difference but not even like half a second and even that could have been down to human errors, timing the dashes isn't the perfect science. For the lightweight dashes we saw no real improvement of speed in the bounce dashes however uh, we did see that the high mobility build mantled and the low one didn't and that ties into the point I've been trying to make in from why I would choose the lower mobility set. Uh, the lower uh, distance or the lower your head is while you travel at that speed just keeps you safer and keep in mind I was trying to stay as low as possible in both the high mobility and the low mobility tests that's literally as low as the high one could go while it was carrying its momentum it was either carry that momentum or stop and walk uh, for the double dashes it makes sense that the higher mobility build went slightly faster as it is lifted slightly higher off the ground as we've proven with the higher mobility jump heights so finally, for the final test, I saw I definitely saw enough of a margin to inform people confidently that lower mobility across dashes will result in more horizontal movement, which in turn leads to more momentum being carried between hops and glides, in addition to being safer. 
now that all this has been out of the way, I can finally make a video testing the different timings of the dashes to see if dashing earlier or later is faster. Uh, and I really want to make this Icarus Dash playstyle as efficient as I possibly can. So I hope you all learned something. If you did, you know what to do. If you're a Floaty Boy main, absolutely subscribe because that's literally all I post. Thanks, bye.